Welcome to Vegas Circle with Pacquiao and Chris. And today joining the circle with us at Batega Exchange, we're excited to have Managing Director of Chicken Shack LLC, Mr. Jonathan Vitt. So just to give you a quick background of him, they started this business in 2005. We've got 15 stores in five states, uh, from Nevada to California, Colorado, Washington, and also in Oregon. What's really powerful is they got seven stores in Las Vegas, so... Mm-hmm. Excited to have you in the circle. Thank you. Yeah, welcome Good to be here. Good to be here, guys. So we were talking offline just real quick. He's from Kansas, so he's in there talking crazy about the Super That's Bowl. Super well, Bowl. Well, I, have to, I have to say Missouri. Cause, Missouri. Uh, unlike unlike yeah. President Trump, who somebody said, congratulations <laughs> to everyone in Kansas City, Kansas. Yep. Chiefs are not in Kansas City, Kansas. <laughs> They're in Missouri. So and the Royals good. as well. So. That's good stuff. <laughs> so pumped, man. Start your week off right, right? with That's winning it. the Super Bowl. So That's, That's great. It. When did you move to Vegas? Came out here in 89. Oh, so you've been, been here for a while. Years. Yeah, I've been here 30 years. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's home, almost yeah, home now much, for you. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. We were talking a little bit about being a chef, but you've got a wide range of background mm-hmm. uh, well, from I business came, to... I really didn't come out of the, the chef way. I kind of went through uh, the bar business and things like that, you know, working bar manager things. Uh, I moved from St. Louis to came, to California mm-hmm. and uh, started bartending at Laguna in the Laguna Niguel TGI Fridays, which at the oh, time yeah. was the busiest Fridays in the country. Yeah. And that was about the time when cocktail was out. You know, Tom Cruise was oh, spinning yeah. bottles and doing all the rest of that stuff. So <clears> the Friday's bartenders taught he and Brian Brown how to do that. So that was the novelty in those days, you know. So that was, a, that was the busiest beautiful time in the country too. down there in Southern California. Yeah, it was great. And then uh, later I moved to uh, John Wayne Airport when they redid the, the Or airport. Irvine, yep. Yep, mm-hmm. and that's Orange County Airport now. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> but bartender there, the working bar manager there, and uh, – I had some friends from Fridays. I had a, a roommate of mine that was um, always had free flights to, to make the story a little shorter. But yeah. uh, you know, I go to work at six o'clock in the morning and at noon. You know, I'd, I'd get done at twelve thirty at noon. He's calling me on the phone. Shorts, polo, Vegas. You in or you out? So it's <laughs> Man, you know, it was the yeah. unmarried fun time. You know, <laughs> yeah, not of course. I'm not <laughs> married twenty five years. So <laughs> yeah, you better set right that up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, those tackled. are back in the days. You can do whatever you want. So it's literally yeah. duck clock out and get on a plane and fly to Vegas. And I said, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna move there, man. So yeah. just came here and just been here. It's, it's a great place, man. Really, I mean, yeah. me and Chris talk a lot a lot about it. It's a great place for business, yeah. great place to do a lot. And you guys, really I mean, is. you've done well, yeah. you know, of course, expanding, yeah. which is just awesome. So just before we start unraveling, you know, getting into business, mm-hmm. what made you want to be, you, you know, your own boss? Well, I, you know, as, when we were coming out here, as, as yeah. much as we were, uh, I, you know, I, I kind of told myself, I don't think I want to be somewhere. I, I've, it's kind of, I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit, I think, mm-hmm. you know, to make my own way kind of thing. Sure. So it's, I, I think we're pre-millennial uh, and X and Y and whatever the generations are right now. Yeah, no, I can't even keep track. We're finding nobody wants to work for the man, so to speak, anymore. Yep. Everybody wants their own business. I kind of always had that drive to do that. So. You know, I didn't want to, to bar, I was bartending at the time and I'm like, this, this can't last forever and, you know, things like that. So where do yeah. I want to be when I'm 50? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, at, at that time, uh, I got a job at Lone Star Steakhouse. That's kind of, we kind of transitioned into that. So, yeah. um, they were at Flamingo and Maryland Parkway down by UNLV. So this mm-hmm. was their showcase store for overseas investors. So they, mm-hmm. at the time they were the best small business in America from 93 to 96. Really? So, um, I took a job as a, I went from, you know, making as people are familiar with here, five hundred to seven hundred dollars a day in cash, bartending to eighteen thousand dollars a year, which was I think was six hundred and seventy two dollars every Whoa. two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> wow, so that's, that's like the valet. Yeah, yeah, how yeah what happened to much. the valet? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. right. So I uh, just started <laughs> with them, and uh, I took the the uh, I guess about an eight to eight to ten week training program. So they ultimately gave me a store in Lincoln, Nebraska. So I was the first hourly guy to to be promoted to a general manager for them. Most of these guys had, you know, they were 30 to 50 years old and had a lot of restaurant experience. Wow. But um, their culture was kind of like the one-minute manager culture, where, you know, like a, a do-it-now mentality, you're only as good as your last day at work, you know, things yeah. like that. I could rattle off 100 of those. My wife's so tired of hearing it for yeah. 25 years, but it really works, and we kind of, that kind of works at the at the chicken shack right now, you know, when we're mm. we're training people and, uh, and uh, owners and things, you know, just – Hey guys, let's just do it. Keep it simple. You know, mm-hmm. don't make it any simpler than that. And uh, just just put your head down and just go to work. You know, that's, pretty that's much. It. That's that's what happens. What made you want to start like the chicken instead of like let's say a McDonald's or we were right, kind of talking right. about? You well, know, we, well, we started. The guy that hired me at Lone Star, I was his daughter's godfather. I am mm-hmm. his daughter's godfather. Mm-hmm. Um, he started a thing called Chicken Bones. So when we first opened, people who've been coming here for a long time know us as Chicken Bones. B O N Z. So that was kind of a. You know, one of those lessons, don't go into business with friends and family. So that kind of went south. So what we did after about two or three years was uh, 
uh, changed the name to the Chicken Shack and just okay. kind of one of the things from Lone Star was no one of us is the wisdoms in the group. No one of us is smarter than all of us. Mm-hmm. So, you know, let's uh, let's not try to fool the customer. Let's, you know, do always do fresh chicken, fresh fingers, fresh chicken wings, things like that. So and really, when we started, there was no Raising Cane's. There were I think there were two wing stops here. There was one at Sahara and Valley View, I think, was a wing stop. Mm-hmm. And there was just nothing here. You know, it was crazy. Yeah. So but, you know, people never even heard of chicken fingers. Really, but mm-hmm. as early as that as two thousand five, two thousand six, or they're hard to find. So that's true. Yeah. You know, to find them, some, sometimes we're just taking chicken breasts and just cutting them into chicken tenders. Smart, and just fried yeah, them up, just yeah. to keep them fresh and things like that. So it's that's always been cool. like that. You know, we've got the season profile that we have as far as the seasoning that we use and things like that. But it really comes down to fresh chicken and yeah. uh, you know just large, larger wings. Yeah. You know, wings are like shrimp, so you can you know you can do a 40, 50 count shrimp, and it's like a little tiny shrimp cocktail thing or yeah. you can do a jumbo prawn that's five per pound kind of thing so that's we true. do we do six or seven wings per pound so it's you know they're large wings and things like that so and we started with about 10 sauces and kind of worked our way up to about 30 right now oh so, so you got some flavor 30 yeah going. yeah we got a lot yeah, that's, got a yeah that's so that's kind of fun so you know we've got a lot of people that try and try them all you know yeah so, what, yeah. what kind of your process? You go from you know working at the restaurant that you're working at, being a general manager, ultimately made you decide to go into your own business and start building up that brand. Well, I think just I think just doing it, I, you can see how it works. I mm-hmm. mean, it's uh, you know it's kind of a blend of wing stop and raising canes. You mm-hmm. know, it's uh, it's fingers and wings and fries, and it's mm-hmm. kind of something that nobody's really doing ten yeah. years ago. True. Um, you know, you got canes is just that, uh, and yep. now you see wing stop. Adding chicken tenders, and everybody in the world's got chicken tenders now. Of course, you know? yeah. So they just, I think I saw a chicken McGriddle sandwich at McDonald's today for breakfast. Is I that right? I mean, it's just, Did it's you just, really? It's crazy. <laughs> it's, 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 chicken's everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, know, that's we kind of started like that, and we said, hey, let's just run with this. It's very, I mean, coming from bars and restaurants and full service restaurants, and, you know, my, my wife, that's where I, I met my wife in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's where we hired her as a hostess. Oh, get out of here. She's yeah. 10 years younger than I am. So, We've been married 25 years now, but, um, you know, it's full service like that. We had minimum staffing levels were, you know, 150, 160 people, things like oh, that. Oh, yeah. You're just, yeah. you know, in control of everything. And like, Babysitter, just, make just simple, crazy simple. babysitter. This is just simple. You yeah. Know? And, and most of the people that have started, and they're really great stories behind the stores that we've opened so far, you know, people mm-hmm. that we only have one person here that's a multi-unit operator mm-hmm. that owns a dozen other franchise Okay. Uh, Restaurants, you know, mm-hmm. it's one brand, but no one else had any experience whatsoever. So it's very easy to train people. And what's that? Because you have seven of them in Vegas. So what yeah. size of town? I know the one in Henderson. We got, um, yeah, we, we're starting in Henderson and we got one in Boulder City. Okay. And then yep. we're out of Lake Mead and Boulder Highway going to uh, Lake Las Vegas. Okay, smart. And we've yep. got one in Valley Verde in 215. Okay. Uh, St. Rose and Spencer. A little bit oh, down yeah. the street from the new uh, Raiders. Smart. Yeah, there. smart area. Yeah. It's going to yeah, traffic area. growing like crazy over there. Yeah. Then we're at Blue Diamond. That we just we just mm-hmm. opened right on Blue Diamond right here, going west uh, between Decatur and you, you know, following real estate, next, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you definitely follow real we, estate. And we, yeah. we have a Trapping Rainbow over here too. So oh, you have one of Trapping Rainbow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. excellent. And we've got yeah. somebody looking at uh, to do some multi units up in the northwest already. So Centennial, yeah, it's booming up there up too. That, yeah, up by Aliante, things like that. So we should get at least two or three more going this year. That's excellent, yeah. man. In Vegas, how, yeah. how do you decide to go from you know having your standalone shop that's you know performing well to all of a sudden mm-hmm. making a decision that you want to turn into a franchise and kind of I, I give the sauce to someone else? I think it's fun. I you know I, I strive to make other people successful. I think yeah, I think that's kind of what it is. It's the drive to yeah. do that. And is it yeah. hard to do to make that transition? Because uh, it seems like a lot of back end legal mm-hmm. work. And yeah, well, there is a, <laughs> there is a lot of that, but you know that's that's pretty minimal. That's not too crazy. Yeah, but uh, the risk it, it's not really a that much of a high risk. I know we were talking offline about right. how much other franchises cost, right, right. but the, it seems like the risk of opening a chicken shack right. and the return would be right. much. Well, it is, it is reasonable. We do, Most yeah. of the stores are in-line stores. You know, so okay. they're in a shopping center as oh, opposed yeah. to a freestanding or something. High tra- we're yeah, we're going to look at probably drive-thrus as we as we grow, probably. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we've got a good per unit average right now above the normal. But, you know, that drive-thru is what drives all that. People just don't want to get out of their cars anymore. They don't want to yeah. come inside to yeah, get something. Know. So yeah. it's kind of a struggle. That's kind of one of my struggles is wanting to keep at a destination location yeah. so that people get out of their cars, come in, get it hot, don't get it swinging off the back of a moped from Postmates or something. You know, we would, just, it's, it's crazy to it's me. It's so it's, funny you talk because but it's just consistent. It tastes, and it tastes different too when yeah. you're not eating there versus getting it yeah. to take, you know, to take yeah. out. And right. do you find that like Uber Eats and 
you know, all these different companies. It's just it, unbelievable I, how. I think it's crazy how they can just charge you 20% to uh, deliver your food for you. <laughs> and they're, you know, make, that's, they're that's making the scary, it, though. That's the yeah. scary thing. You know, the yeah. restaurant yeah. business is, is tough. You know, it is tough. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know what the stat is, but they say you yeah. know, 75, 80% fail in the first two years or something like that. So, yeah, you yeah. know, so you have yeah. to, it's, if you don't know anything about that, you know, yeah. it's like Groupon was a few years ago. Fair you enough. Know, buy one, get one. All of a sudden, all the, the only people come when they get to buy one, get one, and your food cost goes, you know, doubles yeah. and, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's coupon driven. So it's, as Lone Star never did that either. So I kind of bring that with me too. We didn't do a lot of coupons and percentages off and things like that. Mm-hmm. Not to get away from the delivery, but yeah. delivery is another challenge too. You, yeah. know, you want it to get to people the way they, they would get it in the restaurant. That's tough. That's tough for everybody. Yeah. So do you really right participate now. in those type of programs? There's some of the stores here do it. I just, yeah. I'm, I'm so stubborn. I just won't do it. <laughs> yeah. in my store. I just it's won't tough. do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. me, I out quite a bit, but most yeah. of it, it's either for, they have a drive through or yeah. deliver. Those right. are kind of my options. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Other than that, I don't really sit yeah. down very often. Not a lot of fast casual spots. Right. It's those right. two things. And that's pretty much it. Right. <laughs> right. But that's, that's one of the things we're looking at, you know, in the future too. And the more stores you have, that's kind of where we are right now. Mm-hmm. As, a, as far as volume and supply chain, you know, those are the things that I do now, really. You're, when you want to keep the, the product consistent and, uh, you know, go with one service provider as far as the food yeah. and things like that. And you, you get to the point where you can go to Grubhub or DoorDash and say, hey, guys, you know, the same as McDonald's does. That's why they use Uber Eats, and they only use Uber Eats because... Exclusive. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you have all those locations, and they know, you know, everybody knows what the expectations are. So Smart. hopefully we'll be able to get to that point. It seems kind of hard because if you don't have that, because it's hard to do quality control once yeah. it's... You have that kind right. of middleman through the right. delivery. Well, process. that's the thing. Those are the biggest complaints, I think. And people call the store, and they say, hey, I got this, and... It's cold or, you know, I, I just envision somebody opening up a trunk and there's eight or nine orders in there. You go, <laughs> yeah. who's getting it first? You know, I don't, that's, you know, that's true. Yeah. They don't come directly to the restaurant and then go directly where they're going. They're usually doing multiple orders for <clears throat> multiple people. So, yeah, that's a good know. point. That's a good thing to think about. It's a yeah. challenge, yeah. 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 What would you say some of the specific roadblocks if you, so say you wanted to start a franchise, you know, a mm-hmm. Chicken Shack franchise, what would be the roadblocks that you would say, hey, don't do this. Try try this to make it you know successful. All the stores have been successful to this point, really. What my job is to make sure there aren't any roadblocks, really. You good know, job. to help yeah. somebody find a good location, uh, to get a decent amount of tenant improvement, so they're getting some money back for the money they put in. Because ultimately, mm-hmm. you're remodeling the landlord's building, so you know they should they should give you a little bit of money for doing yeah. that because you're going to be yeah. giving them rent for the next, you know, hopefully ten to twenty years. Yeah. So uh, you know, it's just kind of doing things like that and uh, keeping it simple. Do you hear, like, I remember when I was looking back in the day, you know, like, let's say McDonald's franchise, obviously is the most popular franchise, right? right? They say, like, hey, when you're starting off, you're going to be working 70, 75 hours. Mm-hmm. Is it something like that that they expect that, hey, when you when you start a chicken shack, you, you're going to be here, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, it is yeah. really when you start. Of course, um, yeah. And then, you know, through the, hopefully the things that I can, can train them and you sure. know, through our training program, they realize that, hey, I can identify a key person or a supervisor or someone like General that manager, to give yeah. them a key. So, you know, you, you might go from 8 o'clock to 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It's definitely not a 9 to 5. Of course, yeah. But by 6.30 or 7 o'clock, you can say, hey, we're good, man. Just set the alarm, make sure the fryers are off and, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> the doors are locked, you know. There's, yeah, the there's not locked. that much to it. So, yeah. you know, besides that. But, uh, you know, you have to identify people and get the management system kind of going. And then, you know, it's, it kind of runs itself after that point. You know, I think it has to, you have to pay people too. Yeah. That's, that's a big thing. You know? For sure. You got to take care of them. Yeah, especially now. Yeah. Because, you know, that's, I don't it's know. It's changing it's a, the whole it's game. It's a tough man. labor market. Yeah. And especially California because they're doing, you know, I think they're going up a, a, a dollar a year right now. So ultimately they're getting to 15 or $16 right now. And Nevada, Nevada is still at eight seventy five, I think. They're going up a dollar so, a year in California. Yeah, they're going to be about fifteen bucks. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Where are you at in? So you're. I know you're in Vegas. So seven seven stores here, mm-hmm. and then you're in Colorado and all the yeah, other. Yeah, we've got a areas. multi-unit operator in Colorado. They're uh, one's in Parker, and they just ordered open okay. one in Aurora, which is okay. uh, it's an east of east of downtown. Okay. Just on the Beltway from the airport down there. And so, you're looking to double this year, is my I would hope so. Yeah. yeah. I think at least have, an, have another fifteen to twenty under contract, at least if not open. So yeah. we've got a couple more coming here. That should be relatively quick because those are just kind of turnaround okay. locations. There's something right now. So mm-hmm. all we do is go and just do some cosmetic stuff and, and switch it out and just you know hit it hit it pretty hard up there as far as advertising and things like that. It's um, exciting to see that. We've got some more. We've, we've got a guy that did uh, – he's the fourth or fifth one that 
started in Hanford, California in a donut shop. Oh, really? Okay. And it was, and it's right across from the high school. It's, you know, you go, uh, go to Bakersfield, you go to 15 to Barstow, go north, yep. hit Bakersfield, go up to 99. Yeah. And it's, it's farmland up there. You know, it's great country, but I, I made a, a left from Visalia and I'm like, why would he want to do this? <laughs> and you come around the corner and it's everything, Jamba Juice, oh, Red Robin. Really? And it's like, yeah, it's everybody that lives around there on the farm, you know, on all the farms. And I mean, it was, everybody just goes there. That's the hub. So and it's right across from the high school. So he did oh, that for next to traffic. nothing. It was a, a, you know, an existing restaurant already. So most yeah. of the infrastructure was there. So he did that. And then he moved, he'd take a, a food truck up to Fresno to the AAA, next to the AAA. Uh, oh, baseball area? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They got the Fresno Grizzlies up there. I think they're the, they used to be the Astros farm team, but I forget. I don't okay. know. I think they might've changed that, but he used to take a trailer up there. And then when they did an expansion downtown, there's a guy that put 150 million into downtown Fresno. And he mm. said, Hey, I got this pay less shoe source that's down here. Nobody's been down here. I want you to be the first restaurant to open in 50 years. Wow. And he's just yeah. killing it. You know, because they just love the concept. And it's it's, you know, it's easy. It's different. Yeah. And how are these people? Yeah, find most you? of them are in secondary markets. You know, it's it's well, okay. you know, because where you don't have the canes, you don't have the Buffalo Wild Wings, you don't have the wing stops. You know, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. And Raising Canes just got to Denver probably eighteen months ago. Okay, maybe two okay. years ago. Do you find like so? It's good because you see all the expansion with all the growth in Vegas, and obviously the Raiders here. Mm-hmm. You know, the Knights mm-hmm. are here, and just everything that's expanding. Right. Do you see that it's just going to continue? What's your vision of, of seeing how I don't think it's going to stop. I don't think it's going to stop. You know, we my my dad was we were t- briefly talking about him before we started. Yeah, here, but yep. he was the city development director of Kansas City. Yeah, when I was yep. growing up in Kansas City, and he was you know in charge of parkway systems and things like that. He was just amazed. He like my mom and dad got a place in Summerlin, and he was like, yeah, you know, up in town center in Alta up there, and like. 45 days there was a big parkway system with palm trees he's like there's a maze like <laughs> you, know, you go to kansas city right now and it's like nothing's changed the streets just look a lot smaller you know yeah you drive so, I mean, every day I mean, changes. yeah here. i mean las yeah. vegas has grown again yeah. you know, like any other major metropolitan city mm-hmm. in 30 years it's probably 100 years worth of another city of growth it's just amazing yeah. it really is. you can't i mean yeah. you know they do I mean? it so fast too. Yeah. you see the way they built yeah. their stadium oh like yeah the... yeah it's just crazy <laughs> it's, it's so crazy nice. But it's, yeah, I think they're going out towards, you know, we've seen kind of hints of going towards state line. I think that's where everybody's going to go next, too, I think. We've gone far enough up here to the north. Yeah. You know, but I think, you know. You're Just because of high traffic. From here area. to state line, you know, I think you're going to see houses in the next 30, 20, 30 Were you starting years, to see it more yeah. going towards uh, Southern Highlands in that yeah. area? You're starting to see yeah, it pop yeah. up, you yeah. know, past M Resort and all of that in the area. Yeah, yeah. It's starting all to pop sudden, up a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's unbelievable. How do you guys advertise? Like, are you... Doing, uh, you, we were talking a little bit offline. Right. You, Super Bowl, you, you guys were doing some, right, yeah, some stuff we, on we, Fox. We got, some, uh, we got some commercials that we do, just 15 second spots that we do with Fox 5 and things like that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to hit uh, social media a little bit more. You know, it's one of those things that, I, you know, as a 55 year old guy, I'm not that familiar with it, but I didn't yeah. grow up on my iPhone either. So, sure. So, my son, you know, he's in, we, we spoke about that. He's in Reno going to college right now. So, he's yep. he's the marketing guy and social media guy. So, we've got, we've got some. Some fun things that we're doing with that, yeah. You know, some stuff, some in-store things, which are kind of cool too. There's a company that you to kind of dedicate one of your TVs to it, so if you can literally be in the store mm. and go to our Instagram, post a picture, and within ten or fifteen minutes, it's on the on the TV, so you can pretty much post oh, it on the smart. TV. That's oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's, that's a good really, strategy. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool technology. It's, it seems like now because everything with social media is just so organic now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Being yeah. able to get right to it, so right. it's, it's yeah, I think amazing. that's it. I mean, it you does so hard. much more than just. You know, we found with with commercials, they're great. It's one means of advertising. Yeah. But I found people coming in saying, "Oh, JV, I saw the saw the commercial the other day." That's for somebody that comes in. Three times a week already. There you go. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? so that's how good. How many new people are we getting? You know, that's hard yeah. to it's hard to see. But at least new with Instagram and things, you, you know, you see followers and you can kind of measure it. You know, yeah. you see how many people yeah. are looking at it and things like. Well, that. Well, it helps so. out especially with like catering for Super Bowls right. and parties and right, stuff right, like that. That right. business is just crazy right. when you want to order order yeah. stuff. So, what's your favorite thing on the menu? So, if you oh, you man. eat, what are you eating? I had, well. I do grilled chicken right now. We, do you? Okay. We, yeah, we've got a char boiler in all the stores too, so we do grilled chicken. But, okay. Uh, I would say, man, I came up with smoking sriracha about six months ago. Smoking okay. sriracha and some spicy ranch is a good. Is okay. Good combo. You like spice? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Get some flavor. Yeah. yeah. Get some yeah, of that got flavor. Yeah, we a damn hot sauce. It's uh, you know, it's a it's a good sauce. It's not a you know like an oil we put in there. It's actually hot sauce and habaneros and jalapenos and stuff like that. So you it's mentioned a, you have thirty sauces. Sauce. You guys create them all in house from scratch. And pretty pretty much. Yeah, you know, there's some. Well. Staples, you know, buffalo and hot and things like that. Yeah. But a lot of them are, you know, we 
we started making a honey a honey barbecue sauce, which actually contains honey. So it's honey barbecue kind of turned into a uh, habanero honey, and which is a little spicier with habaneros mm. in it. And then we turned that into a honey garlic, which is just garlic parmesan pretty much in the, in okay. the honey sauce, and then a hot honey garlic, which adds You make me hungry just thinking about yeah, talking about good. this. Right? <laughs> this is my good. favorite subject, talking yeah, about food. Good, so, yeah, right? Right. yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's good. So just kind of, you know, just like the stores, it organically grows into something, you know. Yeah. You see some kind of a trend or something. You know, we've, <laughs> we've been messing around with a little Nashville hot chicken, but I'm not sure if we're going to get We'll go that route. route. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty hype right now. Everybody's kind of getting Yeah, everybody's jumping on that bandwagon, yeah. Well, I'm not familiar with Nashville. What is this? Yeah. Super spicy? I'm not it's familiar not with it. Super spicy. It just yeah. has a, I guess, like it's more of a honey kick yeah. to a spice. Yeah, okay. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I love what you say because you say it's, your vibe is a mom and pop vibe uh, outside, but a well oiled machine behind the scenes. That's it. I love that. That's yeah. It. So that's, that's, it. that's a good part to be to be yeah. in business with. So yeah. that's yeah. great. That's, that's well, great. Yeah, Lone Star was that. That was, that was Lone Star. They were the best small business in America. They were netting 22, 23% net when Outback was doing 8 or 9%. Oh, wow. So they kind of did this a little bit of the same thing. And they We've didn't do a lot of before. advertising, they, right? Did, no. It was all word of mouth, word yeah, of mouth yeah, and pretty traffic. Much, yeah, pretty much. And they went into the secondary markets kind of like we've done as well okay. to this point, you know, where there was nothing else, mm-hmm. you know. So the link in Nebraska, you know, there was no Applebee's, no Fridays. We were pretty much the first national chain to roll into town. So we were there for those that can remember Tom Osborne winning national championships. So oh, really? It was crazy. You know, it was a 300-seat restaurant, 200-seat beer garden outside <laughs> That's it's insane, a, but nothing like the chicken shack. It's chicken shack is very manageable. That's nothing good. Yeah. So yeah. you said you guys started two thousand five, and then did you guys start out of state, or did you guys start here in Vegas? Here. In oh, Sunset. you did start Sunset and Mountain Vista, and we, he went an ex metro uh, officer that that uh, his wife was a trauma nurse at okay. St. Rose, and Dignity Health bought um, the hospital where they grew up in Northern California. Okay, so they were able to transfer back and start that store. So, mm. and then I kind of, the guy in Hanford is his cousin and they're the Klamath Falls, Oregon is his other cousin and things like that. So, oh, so they family. And we got up yeah. to Washington state and it was, uh, the gal that was working at the California store, her aunt and uncle mm-hmm. were home builders. And they're like, yeah, we love doing this. We can make some money, but then we got a five year warranty. So it turns into, oh, there's a drip in the faucet, you know, these, uh, you go up to talk to them. They're just loving it. These people that are make a lot of money yeah. building custom homes, but they just love the shack cause they just go in there and talk to people and you know they come in they want the chicken they pay for the chicken they leave yeah. that's our, that's that's our relationship <laughs> yeah i'm gonna have to come and fix the faucet for the next five years yeah all the war so, issues you know, yeah. it's from them and uh you know just kind of organically like that so yeah that's yeah. great yeah. so kind of transition a little bit to vegas because we like to talk about vegas a little yeah. what do you guys do for fun in vegas oh man concerts it, yeah just always We've something going on in vegas yeah. Yeah. yeah especially being recent empty nesters as yeah. we talked about yeah whatever yeah. you want to do whenever you want to do it yeah, that's getting bored like golden Vegas knights or? game like golden knights games like, those are great man it's, the energy there is yes, just unbelievable it's, it's unbelievable it yeah. really is you have to be there in person it's yeah, tough that's to watch true. on tv it's kind of like golf you got to go to the game <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a way it's you don't think you expect it yeah oh yeah you don't expect it i don't think a lot of people do expect it if you're not no. from the east coast in a hockey environment yeah and you get there and i mean they're just over the top at these games yeah the environment's great really yeah crazy. i can't even imagine what they're going to do with the radio stadium with everything going on there yeah, i mean yeah. just with the energy you see at the nights because you think yeah. it might be a little more corporate you think yeah. more corporate environment is the yeah okay stadium. yeah we'll see it'll be interesting yeah Hopefully it's going to be very interesting yeah, yeah. yeah. i sure. would think you'd want to put a, a chicken shack inside there man yes, but it, the I real would, estate's got to be uh, ridiculous yeah, well, <laughs> we're, we're, we're working on that we'll see there you go yeah we'll see that's that's good stuff if you're not eating it if one of your restaurants what would you say your favorite restaurant is in vegas oh goodness my wife and i've been going to the lazy dog oh like yeah town yeah. square yeah 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 we're not we don't own dogs but yeah. uh you know but it's just a place we go sunday usually sunday brunch yeah it's got a great menu it's it actually does we <laughs> just there stuff. recently yeah, yeah lazy yeah. dog is good they yeah, got a few yeah. i think they got one in downtown summerland and they have one yeah. town yeah. square so yeah. i like the fact yeah. that they bring your dogs in there too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Show, I didn't realize it. I'm sitting there one day and I'm like, "This says all service animals." Are yeah, right. Yeah, yeah <laughs> everybody's wait. outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the dogs and that stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, probably a good place. Yeah, Yard House is good. Yard House, yes, yeah. they have a really great menu yeah. too. I think you can be uh, Yard House. Always got the it's got a universal menu, so it's right. it's always good. Right. It's always menu. good food. I don't know how they do that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Cabo, I guess the other two, Cabo Wabo Cantina. That's one. Is that up on the strip? If you yeah. want to go down on the strip, yeah, and get I remember the strip. We got a you know I'm. Is I'm, that across I'm from Jimmy Bellagio? I'm a Buffett fan, so we go to Margaritaville and just kind of post up right there in the chairs facing the sidewalk right yeah. there, or we go to Cabo Wabo and sit on the on the fence right there. You just know, watch. Just people watch. Lunch it. And just, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, crazy. it's hilarious. It's down crazy. There. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. 
the, that's one thing you can do in <laughs> Vegas at any time is people watch and you oh, just yeah, bust yeah. up laughing. Yeah. What's kind of some of your goals over the next probably five years or so? What do you want to try to do uh, with Chicken Shack? I would say just do what we're doing right now. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to look at ex- expanding probably into the drive through concept mm-hmm. at some point just to test that market. Um, okay. I think that's, you know, we talked about that and delivery. Those are the two options and if delivery is not really that option probably the drive through is you know nobody yeah. wants to get out of their car but you know my, what i'm concentrating on right now is just um uh, operations really you know back of the house stuff yeah that i've learned and i know but really it's you know a lot of the restaurants aren't doing that right now a lot of the chains and they're just trying yeah. to catch up as far as we're right now i'm doing back of the house automation things so we're taking all our mm. checklists prep lists everything else and they turn them into an app so You've got a machine back there, and it, you know whatever someone makes, it prints out a label for the health department, you know, and and for us especially, but the health department, so they know you're managing things, everything's within That's the date, smart. things like that, just to yeah. to mm-hmm. take care of it, so no one is on uh, Gordon Ramsay's kitchen nightmares, or yeah, twenty four <laughs> hours to hell and back, you exactly. Know? Yeah. Nobody wants that, yeah. But you know, just just to find the balance between the drive through, the people coming in, and things yeah. like that, but. A lot of the behind the scenes stuff is computer stuff is amazing anymore as yeah. far as running restaurants. You really need to with costs yeah. and things like that, and especially with our business because it's a commodity industry. Chicken is fresh chicken. You know, yeah. if you get frozen stuff and you're doing wing dings and little boneless wings and stuff like that, it's that's, not gonna that's work. just yeah. what it is. But but with fresh chicken, that's always yeah. you know, it's always deviating in the market. You know, up and down things like that. That's wings awesome, are expensive man. right now. Supply and demand. Yeah, everybody's eating wings. Would they? How many billions of wings did everybody eat yesterday? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't lot. even imagine. Yeah, it's a staggering. Yeah. Were you guys at Zoo at Super Bowl? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Were you guys at Zoo at Super Bowl? It was, yeah, it's busy. Yeah, yeah all the stores are busy, yeah. It's a good day. It's, it's the busiest weekend of the year, really. Yeah. So, if my eyes are bloodshot a little bit. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> my gene has been a long 72 hours. But That's yeah. all right, yeah. That's good stuff, man. So, in the, one of the last thing I wanted to ask you, so you're partnered with your wife on the business too, right? So, mm-hmm. she's man- yep, managing yep. with you. That's yep. great, man. Yep. So, exciting, yep. man. You guys got a great future, man. If you're going to be yep. doubling, that's going to be really good. Man. Yeah, so where yeah. can people find you guys at? So can you shout um, out like your social medias and stuff? Uh, yeah, we're at uh, My Chicken Shack LV. Okay. Is Instagram and, and Facebook. Okay. And then uh, we're at MyChickenShack.com is our website. Yeah, you guys got to check them out, man. If you guys need to order anything, they got they got a great Same. menu. So it's awesome. MyChickenShack.com. Yeah. And if you want to get a franchise, they can also That's link. It. There's they a can link, link on there. there. You can go in there and fill it out a page. And yeah, it goes right into something else I'm doing, which is franchise software. So it goes right into Smart. My, Software, Smart. so everybody stays connected pretty much from the first time I contact someone until they open a chicken shack, don't open a chicken shack, or run one for the next 20 years. We can see the whole life cycle of that business. Smart, very so smart. That's all worked into that. There's a lot of technology out there. That's yeah. that's what I'm working on right now because you, Good. as you get more stores, you have to keep up with that and you know come you know through with what you're coming. promising people to be successful and make money. And, yeah, definitely. You know, yeah. that's the goal. At the end of the day, we're all. We're not working because we're uh, just just love it so much. No, nah. right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. for the money. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. So that's good stuff, man. But well, we appreciate you hanging out with us, man, yeah, that's and give, great. giving giving no, us some great. wisdom. That's, yeah. So it's, it's I need fun. to go get some chicken, man. Right? Yeah, for sure. I should have brought some. But we uh, yeah. Been able to do no, this. I wouldn't be able to get it out, man. I was <laughs> asleep over here. Well, good stuff, John. Thank you, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank back. you.